I want to welcome you, Excellency, to, to St. Lucia. As you know, um, St. Lucia and England have shared historic ties. So I want to welcome you to, to St. Lucia. Oh, I want to tell you we have an excellent relationship with your team in, in, in St. Lucia. They've done a, a, a very good job. I want to thank you also for, um, I'm sure your, your High Commissioner here must have told you we were very concerned about our status as far as travel is concerned. Mm -hmm. And we are doing, we do, the, the COVID pandemic is affecting the entire world. Mm -hmm. And in St. Lucia, we are doing our best to mitigate the, the effects of COVID. I can assure you that the safety of our citizens and the safety of our visitors are key to, to, to our, our survival. Because St. Lucia depends very heavily in fact, over 50% of, of our GDP is based on tourism. And we will try our best to secure our citizens and, 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 our, and our visitors. So I want to tell you that the government of St. Lucia will do whatever we have to do to ensure that we, we mitigate the effects of COVID and St. Lucia becomes a country where, albeit different, but you can enjoy it. Our country. We also have very serious initiatives to discuss with you. Um, as you know, we and I'm sure the Minister for Infrastructure will, will enlighten you on the work we're doing on our roads. Mm -hmm. And again, the west coast of our, of our country, where, that's where we have the Pitons and all the Pitons is a World Heritage Site. And then we needed to improve that, that, that network. Mm -hmm. That initiative was taken before I was in government, mm -hmm. but as I've always said, when even an initiative is started, once it's a good initiative, we, we shall continue. So we want to we want to continue that work for the 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 employment that it, it will create mm -hmm. and for the infrastructure improvement. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for. I think that initiative was started by um, Prime Minister Cameron. Yes, that's right. Uh, yes. Yeah. And it's involved. It took some time, but <laughs> it started uh, most things. Okay. Um, we will also understand the vagaries of the weather and the climate change. Mm -hmm. It's very important to us. Um, our region can be wiped out, literally wiped out in a few hours mm -hmm. with a hurricane. We can be here today and tomorrow our country is completely wiped out. And I mean completely. So climate change is very important to us. We look forward to the interventions in, in Glasgow. That's what my Minister of Senior Development is going to be there. Um, I have not yet decided whether I can I'll, I'll travel, but I'm thinking based on, on what I've heard and the importance of, the, of that trip, I think I may have to be, be in Glasgow 26. So we look forward to the interventions. We look forward because our islands, our, our islands suffer the most, but we emit the, the least, which is unfortunate. But this is the reality of life, and, and we hope that we can make some serious interventions at that at that at the seminar, so the whole world can benefit. This climate change also affects everybody. Um, we hear about the strange weather, like in New York, a hurricane affected the world. In England, you had your share of floods. Mm -hmm. So um, climate change affects everyone. So the the government solution will um, try its best to make our contribution to that important um, We also have the concerns about our debt. Our debt levels are rising, and, and it's, been, it's been aggravated by, by the pandemic. Um, we know that because of our status, we, can't get, we cannot get loans at, a, at, a, at an, an affordable rate, because it's said that we are not Actually, a poor country, but where we are. <laughs> but we hope that there, there can be some. Um, we can our partners can help us to graduate, so that we can get loans at a better rate than we can because it's necessary. Our our employment situation is worrisome, particularly among the youth. This is why our government has initiated a youth economy, where we hope to get young people involved in sustainable employment, employment in areas that they enjoy, mm -hmm. um, and we've, we've, we've coined it a youth economy. Mm -hmm. So we will, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have some discussions with you on, on, on that matter. 
But generally, we know you've helped us in crime, in crime and addiction. Again, a vexing problem, but we can only we can solve it is by cooperation. So we look forward to our discussions. We look forward to continued cooperation within the country hours as we look to have a world that the effects of the pandemic will be lessened. We look forward to that day. Um, we know I've I've been speaking to the High Commissioner about vaccines. Mm -hmm. If you have available some vaccines for us, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're thinking of how we can use them. Mm -hmm. But there's still a lot of vaccine hesitancy yes. in our country. But we, we, we are trying to persuade people for education that they, they should be vaccinated because we believe that vaccinations are the only way now, at least, to stem the So we look forward to our discussions. Welcome to St. Lucia. And um, we hope to have a very fruitful discussion. Thank you. I'm here really in my role as the uh, adaptation champion uh, for the COP26 presidency. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great title. Um, what it really meant was we, uh, as we took on the presidency, we, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson was very clear that he wanted uh, to make sure that this COP, the COP that we are hosting, uh, rebalanced uh, across the piece all the issues from the Paris Agreement, not only the challenges of mitigation and making sure that countries who are major emitters uh, work very hard to reduce those, which is obviously critical, but the other issues, both in terms of finance, as you mentioned, uh, and how finance is allocated and is accessible, and the challenges of adaptation and resilient investment are made so that we look across the whole piece, because it should be looked at holistically, because as you say, for St Lucia and for other uh, regional uh, countries, the issue is not the mitigation challenge, but the ability to be resilient to those uh, weather impacts which are coming, even if we manage to solve mitigation tomorrow, we've had those impacts already and they're coming for years to come. So the ability to become more resilient is critical. So that's very much my focus and it's been, uh, I've had a fascinating visit across the region for the last week, um, visiting uh, both projects where uh, the UK has been working uh, in country to help develop uh, resilient agriculture, resilient investment and so on to understand uh, how that's working in practice and where uh, you as nations with very, as you say, very urgent uh, challenges are uh, thinking about them and indeed hearing from all of you where, uh, where the problems lie and hopefully I can take those back and really try and drive that through. I think the one I hear uh, most loudly uh, is the access to finance uh, in order to make those investments, in order to reduce the risks uh, which is, you know, in a circular sense, clearly the right solution that we want to try and achieve. So that's a very important focus. Um, I think of this this COP coming up as the uh, if Paris was if the Paris Agreement was signed on the basis of why we're doing it, this is all about how we deliver now. So those tools uh, that need to be put in place, if they're not there already, or to work better if they don't, so that countries like Saint Lucia uh, are able to present the case for the sort of for instance, we were just discussing with your Minister of Education, schools that are resilient to hurricanes so that you are able to get children back to school after the weather shock has been. So looking across the piece, that's important. I'm really excited to be able to visit uh, the road uh, project yesterday uh, and to, to get a real sense of, sense of you know, how important it's going to be and how, um, how much opportunity it will give, not only to have a resilient road, but the opportunity for economic uh, growth to, to move to other parts of the island that aren't there now. So I think at so many levels, making sure that access to finance uh, works better, because not only does it obviously provide resilient investment, but the opportunity exactly like your road to prove uh, that it helps you as a country to be able to grow your economy more widely. Um, I think on, on the challenges of COVID, I absolutely hear you, and it's great to see the work uh, that you're doing to try and reduce vaccine hesitancy. It's a challenge in a number of countries um, and trying to, you know, get to grips with the, the reasons why and they're different in, in every country, but get to grips with that is one. We, I was talking to um, uh, uh, someone yesterday about it and, and the cha challenging me on how we'd achieved it. And it was a very interesting challenge and actually we did it by uh, our, G our, our GPs and our, our doctors and nurses in our communities being the advocates in fact so it was where those relationships with our most vulnerable were strongest where the trust was strongest it was our doctors and nurses 
persuading you know the most vulnerable to have the vaccine uh, and to come you know get beyond that anxiety because it was new uh, that there was you know the, the worry of whether it was okay uh, but I think that continues to be uh, a challenge that uh, we all want to in encourage you to resolve because of course that's one of the uh, reasons as you say to our UK uh, solution relationship and our you know the, the tourist trade which we want to see uh, back up and running as strong as possible for you one of the criteria for um, for our system our, our, our foreign travel system for UK citizens is obviously the level of vaccination in country which then demonstrates that reduced risk um, so uh, that continues to be I know something that the High Commissioner will be you know, happy to work with you with to make sure that those messages as you make progress are fed back into back into the UK system. But really it's such a such a pleasure uh, to be here and to have a chance to really hear from all of you about what's important and what you want to see uh, from COP26, the sort of uh, practical outcomes, the roadmap that uh, helps St Lucia to make progress in some of the challenges that the climate shocks that, as I say, are, are we know are coming and are tougher than ever before, um, how, how that roadmap from COP26 can be as useful as possible uh, to your administration as you tackle, I know what it's like, I'm the UK Energy Minister in the UK, you know, tackle the day-to-day -day challenges of making those transformative investments.